Today we're going to be talking about vaginas and you name it. We're going to be talking about it. We're going down into detail everything you need to know about your vagina. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the most highly requested topic right and um, especially with women so today we're going to be talking about vaginas and you name it we're going to be talking about it we're going down into detail everything you need to know about your vagina so yeah and um, if it's something you're really interested in then obviously um yeah sit back and enjoy it if you're joining us for today and um, welcome i hope you subscribe i hope you join the little family that we've got going so yeah it is beneficial for anyone and everyone not just um you know as a woman your partner can also learn a bit more i am um a pharmacist um, by profession so i will be getting into a lot of scenarios that i get to see every day i will also put in like different scenarios as well so hopefully um it could apply to anyone so um maybe this would help and um, you might be able to get a tip or two from what i'm gonna say so first things first shout out to every girl out there i mean you guys are super women and honestly being a lady is one of the hardest things you could ever ever imagine and this ranges from your monthly cycles to your mood swings and also to your personal hygiene trying to keep it all fresh and nice not just for yourself but for your partner so yeah we we, we go through a lot and you kind of have to give us props all the time so yeah uh so shout out to all my girls i've made little bits of notes just so i do not forget every information i want to give out so you know how people say you need to love yourself every day like no one else is going to love you yes you need to love your vaginas like i can't stress the importance of just loving it like looking in the mirror right take a day look in the mirror just look at how beautiful it is just appreciate what nature is given to you and be any shape any size just look into her and say do you know what you're beautiful so your lady part is an amazing organ and um, it's one that self cleans itself you do not need much you just need very very little things here and there each person's lady parts varies in size on the level of secretion and also that's based on um, each time of your cycle so a lot of people might secrete a lot more than others and uh, it depends on each person's female body so just bear that in mind as well and also the color of your discharge as well that you really really need to pay attention to because those are signs those out those are the things that would give you signs that yep we need to check this out yep we've got something going on that's not right so we need to get to it so any sort of infection going ranging from thrush to bacteria vaginosis commonly known as bv um yeah uh we will be looking at different angles and different aspects also i will be recommending over-the-counter products that you could use so um this is based on what i've had to treat people with and it's worked effectively and what i've had to treat myself with as well in the past which has worked effectively for me as well so yeah and also when to know that you need to go to the doctor because if it's not being treated over the counter if you if the over the counter products isn't working then we need to refer you to a gp or a specialist in in that area i would like to say that this is a very sensitive topic based on the fact that when i get people coming into the pharmacist pharmacy to say can i speak to a pharmacist they just literally just blush and I think what i tend to do is i always say do you know what it's happened to me so um it's the best way to sort of learn as well and just make everyone feel comfortable <laughs> remember i said a vagina cleans itself so already if you are um you know putting in products that are not meant to be put in at risk of setting the good bacteria there are good bacteria there guys and so the first step is just maintaining an overall cleanliness and um, that ranges from your diet your ex like exercising and the type of products you put in as well so those are the things that you know that would maintain a good healthy vagina um overall so uh, i will be running through some steps so if you have any questions then obviously leave a comment below leave a comment below 
and I will get back to it as much as I can. So first step, just water is enough guys. Like I can't stress how much I get worried when people say, oh yeah, are you soap? I'm like soap, how, how, how? Like I literally get stressed when people just say that just water is enough. Um, as a woman, I you have to kind of just understand what works for you and yeah, just water is enough. Avoid just douching as well, but it is very bad. So what that means is there is a device that a lot of people would buy. So it supplies water, literally you insert it into the vagina and, you, and that allows massive amount of water to just gush in and just self clean the vagina but what you're doing in essence is literally washing out everything you're washing out all the mucus all the good healthy bacteria and what your body does is it goes into a shock and it's like oh I need to um, do this I need to give back the bacteria that's been washed out and sometimes that's overcompensated like sometimes they they you know the, the system shuts down and they're like oh no I don't have enough I don't have enough and then that would lead to bad bacteria is creating like a nice safety place to just sort of have fun do parties and all that and li literally we do not want that I am not a fan of feminine washes I'm not a fan of it so stuff like this um I'm, I'm not a fan of it I just don't like putting this because what happens is um you know they tend to have fragrances that could have been extracted like done in the lab or um extracted through plants and what happens is you just end up washing with them and again that upsets the vagina and so all this um, feminine washes I think is just um, a way for companies to get your money and um, it's all a oh it's gonna make you smell nice I think if nature wanted the vagina to smell like roses or you name it then it will smell like roses so honey like honestly if you know of anyone <laughs> that has a vagina that smells like roses then let me know because on it like there isn't anyone out there so um is I, and also i need to let you guys understand that everyone has a natural scent so your scent will be different from the next person and another person but um what you need to be looking out for is if you have a funky smell then we need to address it as quickly as possible so everyone has a natural smell there isn't a very very you know sweet or um rosy vagina that doesn't exist mate it doesn't exist and <laughs> um, yeah uh um, nine out of ten a lot of people that think that smells like roses tend to have um thrush or any sort of imbalance down there only because they add too much or they just add too much perfumes which you know it's only for a short time yes it would smell but you start to get all this um weird sensation which you shouldn't be having as a woman so um yeah so other ways people find out that they have a funky smell down there is during sex so sometimes when you're in an enclosed room you know sex does smell yes but when it gets really funky then you know you you know it is a problem and we need to address it and also maybe when you're exercising as well so when you do any sort of um, exercise you sort of um, have that smell so that those are ways a lot of women will detect that they've had that and also if you want to put a finger you do it <laughs> yeah honestly do it but that's one of the easiest way to just check yourself from time to time it's your lady part no one's watching you no one's judging you just do that and just smell it if you think yep it smells great then you're fine and sometimes your partner might be the one to tell you now that's when you don't want your partner to be like oh you have this but again there's some people that would say I think you need to check this out I really do think so so again some people get embarrassed and some people it's fine but if you have a partner who tells you that then you're very lucky because they honestly do care for you so you shouldn't be embarrassed because at the end of the day it's making you not only you happy it's also making your partner happy as well also when you shower it's very very important to dry down there really really well because what you don't want to do is let bacteria just grow because what bacteria tend to do they like really really damp areas so they grow and they reproduce and they just get the party going so we want to try and avoid all of that so wearing tight jeans wearing less breathable underwears 
those are where like bacteria literally love this kind of hearties and they would grow and they would have babies and they would have uncles and aunties in your lady part so we need to avoid all of that as much as we can that leads me to um underwears you have to be very very it's very important as a lady to choose the right underwear and also to let it hang when you're not going to work when you're home the whole day do you know what just wear something and just let it hang no one's watching no one needs to know i always advise um cotton underwear or lacy ones as well this are really really nice to have and it's easier to just like let it breathe you know it's not it's not literally so tight and also try not to go for really really tight underwears let it be loose and um yeah and if you're someone who wears panty liners as well you have to get an unscented one there is nothing worse than you getting um a panty liner that has perfumes in there because what that does is again it will add to more problems and we want to try and avoid that as well another one is um eating healthy yes it is important so if you're someone who loves sugar what happens is sugar the sugar gets broken down and sometimes it could be in your um which can go into your urine and also um that way if you're not wiping properly that allows more bacteria to grow bacteria love sugar so they would grow they would breathe they would party everywhere so we want to try and avoid that as well so you need to cut down on a lot of sugar a lot of um really really unhealthy food junks you name it we need to cut down on that and avoid problems like a yeast infection commonly known as, thr as thrush i must say there are some people that have thrush for other reasons for example if you just finish a course of antibiotics that can disrupt the ph of the vagina so it's very important to know where your infection is stemming from so if you're in a long course or a short course of antibiotics you know definitely you will be getting one because what happens is the back you know the antibiotics just kills both the good and bad bacteria in your system so yeah uh, uh, foods that help produce a naturally healthy vagina is yogurt so and um, eating those live yogurt and stuff those are really really good ones and also kimchi as well they are actually good as well so they are good source of probiotics so what that means is it helps to allow more good bacteria to be produced in the body and it would literally go to where it's needed so um if you love your yogurt then keep drinking it but go for the more natural ones rather than ones with lots of sugars and stuff so a more natural yogurt that's a good one to sort of spice it up you might put a bit of grapes or a bit of pineapples in your yogurt or just anything strawberries those are a good source of food for a healthy vagina so yeah those are what i would recommend anyway not practicing safe sex is one of the easiest ways to get an infection so obviously that's when there's more skin to skin action going on as long as you and your partner go through all the steps then it's fine there are certain roles that your partner needs to play to ensure that not just you but they avoid passing anything to you as well so those are what i would advise and also oral sex as well yes they are a major factor to a lot of um, underlying conditions like thrush or bacterial vaginosis so i will be talking about tips on how to ensure that if you are practicing oral sex then you've got to definitely know certain things about this so first up um you need to brush your tongue and your teeth twice a day yes twice a day in the morning and in the night as much as you can i don't think anyone brushes three times a day unless you're an ocd person i'll show you this brush it's got that back there which is specifically designed for your tongue and the side of your um cheeks so um those are ways that bacteria could potentially grow and um, so you need to be brushing your tongue not just your teeth your tongue as well and inside your cheeks and um, 
because you know if you're doing your oral sex you're literally getting all up in there so we need to try and wash every aspect of it twice a day and also change your brush change your brush as much as you can i would say you should change your brush once or twice a month that way you're reducing the risk of an infection again washing up and peeing after sex um, that reduces the risk of a uti and also it i think it's just good to just naturally just empty your bladder after you, after all the pressure that you've been in also just wash before you go to bed that's a good one because if you guys have been engaging in oral sex you're washing away any bacteria that may have come from his mouth or her mouth so just washing it and that will reduce the risk of a thrush or any sort of infection that you could get and also one of the reasons why I think it's important to wash is for example so you know how the space between <laughs> you know how the space between the vagina and the and the bum hole is literally that tiny yeah so what happens is if you're having sex for example the guy's penis or your sex toy could touch your bum hole and that would mean you're actually putting it inside your vagina during sex so those are one of the causes of a uti so it's very very important to just wash up so that would mean you are less likely to have that so again you're not just keeping yourself clean you're keeping your your partner clean as well and also that could reduce a chance of a uti for you and your partner so this is a toilet wipe that i purchased again for you guys a lot of people flush it down the drain no you shouldn't be doing that um what you can have is plastic bags like this those are really really good they're like one pound so you can always purchase it so after you finish cleaning and um, or going to the toilet or weeing make sure you're wiping from front to back so imagine this is your vagina yep and this is the top bit so where the vulva is the lip of your vagina this is let's say your bum hole so you're literally taking the wipe and you're wiping it all the way you know from front to back not the other way so you're actually going from the top bit down to the bottom bit so those are ones that i feel like a lot of people miss out on especially um young adults so you know you've got to be really really careful and you've got to be really really patient with yourself when you're doing stuff like that uh and finally during your period guys like uh you have to make sure you're changing your tampons and your sanitary towels at least five times a day yes anyway it depends on if again it depends on if you are a heavy bleeder as well but i naturally think that the maximum hour you should be keeping a tampon in is two hours or three hours tops if but if you're out and about just go to a public toilet and just get your wipes and just clean and what they tend to do they have like a little and bin just for sanitary stuff so do not flush the wipes down the toilet and also shower frequently and um, every time during your period it doesn't allow space for any bad bacteria to grow as well so that's you keeping your lady part really 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 happy so if you're someone who enjoys a bath as well and um, I find out a lot of reasons why people might have a lot of problems down there is if you sit in a bath for long what happens is again you are um introducing a lot of harsh chemicals into your vagina area so what i tend to say is you baby products they've got really really mild um content in there and it's less likely to produce any problems down there so you don't want to end up having any vagina dryness or any itchiness or any soreness after or you know in a week or two weeks so because it does accumulate so avoid having a lot of bath if you can have more showers then obviously have more showers and if you want to have your bath then um definitely what you can do is after you finish having your bath just get water you know get your shower head and just rinse down there before you step out of the bathroom so those are my little tips that i will advise for anyone who likes to take a regular bath rather than your shower and do not use talcum powders don't use talcum powders down there it is known to cause cervical cancer so if you're using talcum powders then you need to stop using it because of you don't want to have any adverse effects in the future and avoid using all these harsh chemicals because it is known to cause vagina cancers 
and you want to just take care of it in the best way possible it does self clean itself so you need to trust the process right so let's get into the products I tend to recommend for my patients so a lady came in and she said look I'm having very very itchy vagina so there's always something called a differential diagnosis so I eliminate what I think the problem is and what I think it's not so what happens is she comes in she tells me look I've got this and I run through the symptoms so are you itchy down there if you're itchy and there's no weird discharge um, especially colored ones then it nine out of ten times it tends to be like a really mild irritation now if you start to have like a cut like a like a more cheese cheese discharge then that tends to be more of a thrush so what I recommend is um you can get this from any pharmacy and also you can speak to your pharmacist about it so this is clotrimazole 1% this is an antifungal cream that you could get there are different strengths of the clotrimazole so I actually got two of them so that's the 1% and this is the 2% and you can either get either or um, this is only for external use it only helps with the external symptoms so you don't want to be putting any into it and also you cannot your, your partner can use it so if you're a guy and you have a bit of an itchy um, penis then that's one to definitely look out for if you feel like you're not more, you're not of a cream person or um, if you'd rather want a quicker type of clearing for a thrush then there is also pessary so that again is an antifungal um, like an antifungal um, pessary so a pessary you insert up into the vagina overnight so um, you have to keep it overnight and depends on um, your level of thrush one is enough to clear the infection and some people might use up to three but if you're using up to more than one then you need to be speaking to your GP because over the counter you're only allowed to use just the one but when you come back and you're having to have more symptoms and it's not clearing then you definitely need to be speaking to your GP right and another option is there is a tablet it's called fluconazole I will put a picture up as well so you have an idea of what it is that's the one pill again it can be used for both men and women if you and your partner are suffering from a thrush it's fine for both of you to treat together right the next one now if it's not thrush then it's likely to be maybe like a bacterial vaginosis right what is that so that is more of a very very angry infection so it tends to be very smelly that's when you get the really really funky smell with thrush you don't tend to get that smell but more of a heavy discharge so it's more like a cheese discharge but with a bacterial vaginosis you actually see a different color um, to that now that's a bit harder to treat I must say because um, you know you you need a prescription for it but what you can do in the meantime is just stop washing with soap if you have been washing with soap and just use water now um, in pharmacies there is something called caniston balance and that would help to just bring back the pH of the vagina back to the normal level and um, a lot of people tend to buy that but if that doesn't treat it you can always go to your, your GP and he can actually prescribe metronidazole so that would help clear the infection that's usually like a three to five day treatment of antibiotics again um, you can either go for the tablets or a gel so I have had this problem before and it's been treated but um, hence the reason I'm happy to share it so those are what I would advise let me see yeah yeah so metronidazole right so I think I have touched up on a lot of topics so far but um, maybe next time I might go a bit more into the different um, vagina conditions that you could think of so again um, if you like what I put out there then please like please subscribe I love you guys for listening been amazing like I'm actually enjoying this which is so weird like I didn't think so so let's get me up to 200 subscribers I'm currently on 140 so let's get me up until there so that's a challenge so like comment subscribe and I will be with you guys next time love you all Mwah.